been more than six years since I entered that strange house in Boston. But to me, it was just five months ago. Amnesia, the doctors called it, probably brought on by acute mental stress. I remember investigating the far side of the library. There was screaming. According to the police report, they had searched the house for hours, only to find me later collapsed on the floor. When my eyes opened and I spoke, my colleagues recoiled in fear. There was something unnatural in my voice and blank gaze. They committed me to Arkham Asylum, where I was diagnosed with severe schizophrenia. As it became clear that I presented no danger to either myself or others, I was released from the asylum's care. I have learned little of my activities in the six years that followed. The accounts I've been able to piece together show much of my time was spent in travel and study. I maintain a fanatical infatuation with the occult, delving deep into volumes concerning witch cults and dark legends, often in languages unfamiliar to my own. When I reawakened five months ago, exactly six years after entering that house in Boston, no trace was left of what had been a secondary personality. I was myself again, or at least what I believed myself to be. Return to normal life has been a painful process. In recent days, my dreams have been plagued by cosmic landscapes, and I've become fearful of my own reflection. I am beginning to remember things from that day, more than six years past, that I've told myself. Jack Walters. Uh, hello, Mr. Walters. My name's Arthur Anderson. I need your help finding a missing person. I don't take that kind of job. Uh, did you get my package? Um, uh, hold on. What exactly do you want from me, Mr. Anderson? Um, it's one of my store managers, you see. Brian's his name. Ryan Burnham. Nice lad. He disappeared recently from the first national grocery store in Innsmouth. Innsmouth? I never heard of it. Uh, it's a small fishing town on the coast, not far from Arkham. Uh, I'd like to see you in person before you leave. Hold on there a minute. I didn't agree to take this... What the hell? I'll be here all day anyway. I can't stop yawning. Let's see. I have a new client, Mr. Arthur Anderson, the regional manager of the First National Grocery Store chain. It appears that the First National Grocery in Innsmouth was recently burglarized, and its manager, one Brian Burnham, is missing. From what I have been able to gather, Burnham is something of a young rogue, a friend of the family. Mr. Anderson gave him a job as a favor. Burnham is looking like the prime suspect for the robbery, but there are uh, a few things that don't add up, not to Anderson and not to me. For instance, why would Burnham force an entry into the store when he had a full set of keys, free access to the cash register, and the combination to the back office safe to misdirect any investigation? If that was his plan, why did he disappear? Following my conversation with Mr. Anderson, I found out what I could about the ancient town of Innsmouth for generations. The crumbling seaport and its people have been shunned by neighboring communities. Outsiders are unwelcome there, and there are superstitious tales of a strange element in the town's oldest families. 
they are mixed blood, so the stories go, whatever that's supposed to mean. The usual Hicktown prejudice, no doubt. After making a brief visit to Innsmouth, my client came away distrustful of the local authorities. He isn't buying their line that Berman robbed the place and wants to know what happened to him. Only one bus goes to Innsmouth, and tomorrow afternoon I'll be on it. <sighs> it feels good to have a purpose after five months trying to break through my amnesia. I also feel a little apprehensive. Maybe it's the, uh, maybe it's the wild stories about the town, or maybe it's just because I haven't had a case in so long. I guess we're gonna find out. Driver, how far did he stop? Almost there. I'll drop you at the town square of Innsmouth. Why lock the gates? Keeps out wanderers looking for work. You know what those folks like that interfering with our affairs. Is the bus from Arkham always this empty? Aye, and we prefer it that way. Not many come to Innsmouth. But what about trade? Surely the port needs business. Innsmouth has the means to look after her home. End of the line. Could you direct me to the first national grocery store? I hear they have a shop in town. I don't know nothing about that. Oh, well, you see, I'm looking for a young lad called Brian Burnham. I'm a friend of the family. He worked in the store. Don't know who you're talking about, Bella. I'm looking for Brian Burnham. Can't help you. It's the first national grocery store. It's unlocked.
Looks like the door was forced open. There's a bottle of bootleg rum and a wooden handle. The till's empty. It looks like I need some sort of li Stop dicking around! <gasps> oh, and you fell. Yeah. Assorted foodstuffs. Nothing useful. Foodstuffs. The storage area is clutter free and well organized. It looks we got a book. Uh, inside Boston Strangers Church. One of our readers who live near its headquarters in an ordinary looking Boston residence would need no introduction to the Fellowship of the Yith, or whatever the name is. For those who have not encountered this mysterious semi religious group before, a few words of explanation are necessary. Since our country is founding upon the basis of religious freedom, its shores have been home to many small religious groups outside the mainstream. No small number here are headquartered in the the states of New England where the pilgrims themselves sought a new free world a new world free of religious persecution but the question must be asked at what point does a religion become a cult and its trusting adherents not to mention its blameless neighbors become victims that is the question this journal poses in regard to the fellowship of the Yith. in a month long investigation our intrepid reporters have diligently sought out the truth behind this so called church its soldiers are somewhat mysterious, the more so since the group's leaders declined to be interviewed or to assist our investigation in any way. However, it seems that the fellowship was founded more than 20 years ago by one Victor Holt based on a revelation he had received from beyond the confines of this world. Okay. Holt has not been seen for almost six years. His followers apparently believe that he is communicating with the mysterious powers behind his faith and that he is shortly to return with new insights and teachings. All this sounds like a harmless, if eccentric, spiritual group, little different from many others. However, those who make their homes near to the Fellowship's headquarters tell a different, more sinister story. The adherents of this obscure sect are to be found loitering on street corners, casting medicine glances at their innocence. How the hell do you pronounce that? In a... In no that word neighbors and frequently engaging in acts of petty crime which the local police seem powerless to prevent or redress. Straight lights have been observed burning in the windows of the old house at all hours of the day and night. They change color unpredictably and cast weird intelligible, unintelligible shadows. Christ, how long is this? Even more disturbing are the noises which have been heard to issue which have been heard to issue from within the mysterious building. They include chanting, unearthly music, and worst of all, screams like those of lost souls in agony. Many of the sex neighbors are convinced that its services include human sacrifice or similar atrocities. Those few who dared complain to the police were told that because the house is private property and because there is no concrete evidence of any wrongdoing, the most they can do is file a noise complaint. Are the, horrors, are the horrors of Salem being reenacted in our city more than two centuries on? Is this fellowship of Yeth engaging in unspeakable and criminal acts of worship involving torture and sacrifice? Why is nothing being done to ease the fear and distress they cause the local community? More pages. The source was in the police department speaking on the condition of un 
of anonymity, told the Globe that the fellowship is suspected of involvement in a number of local crimes, but so far the lack of evidence and reluctance of nervous witnesses to come forward have thwarted any official investigation. Very well, we say, where the police cannot or will not investigate, the Globe shall continue to act in the interest of Boston citizens, fearlessly exposing the truth about the so-called church and its followers. Our findings will be published in these pages over the following months so that all may know the truth. Editors note, it is with great sorrow that the Globe announces the death of reporter Howard Adelstone, who was leading the paper's investigation into the fellowship of Yig when he apparently drowned in Boston Harbor. The coroner has ruled his death a suicide. Our condolences go out to his family. Yeah, okay. Oh, the manager missing. Thieves have robbed the first national grocery store in Innsmouth, breaking down the door and forcing open the cash register. The newly appointed manager, Mr. Brian Burnham, has been missing since shortly before the robbery. This is a very disturbing turn of events, said Mr. Arthur Anderson, the first national's regional manager from his Arkham office. This branch had only recently opened, and first national grocery had high hopes for its success, given the general lack of modern stores and amenities in Innsmouth. The robbery is a is a definite setback and more worrying still is the fact that the branch manager remains unaccounted for. Uh, the authorities cannot be reached for comment. Yeah, because none of them can fucking read. Alright. Well, I agree with the locals on one thing. I shouldn't be stuck in this miserable excuse for a town. I can see why nobody comes here, that's for sure. Another slow day at the store. First, I thought people were staying away because First National is a local. But I haven't seen anyone go into any of the other stores either. Come to that, I haven't seen the other stores open for business. This place is deader than dead. Still, it won't be long before I'm out of here, before we're both out of here. She's the one good thing about Instant. We'll bust open old man, white safe, take a car, and then it's New York City. Bright lights, nightlife, everything, I'll show her all of it. Oh, so you probably did fucking steal. I know I read those before. A diary. It's gotta have some clues. It had a couple. Assorted foodstuffs. Nothing useful. can feel the air through holes in the brickwork here. I knew it was good for something. The cellar's filled with human remains. Various chemicals and apparatus for developing photographs. Old photos of Innsmouth. Most of them have faded beyond recognition. Watch out for ammo pickups. Ammo will always carry across to the next chapter, but the quantity you can carry for each weapon is capped. The interview shows a total round you are carrying, including those in the gun. Oh, that's also awesome. might have ammo and no fucking gun. The old printing press appears to have been sabotaged. General notices. They're all nothing of interest. Am I still crawling? No. Why are these things so fucking high? Nope. Nothing of interest. Nothing of interest here. Holy shit! Nothing of interest. Ah, from the stench in here. This noose broad must have kicked it a few months back. How the hell did she kick it a few months poor back? Poor woman must have taken her own life. Shouldn't she be far more decayed? It 
won't budge. The door's bolted shut. Jack. Do I know you? Lucas Mackey. Sorry to start. Who the fuck are you? Insmith doesn't get a lot of visitors. New names spread fast. What are you doing in town, Jack? Hear about the missing Burnham boy? Not bad. I'm a private detective. My client's a friend of the Burnhams. Seen the latest press from Arkham? Your boy's been quite busy. Hmm. What about you, Mackie? You're obviously not a local. What's your business in town? Yeah, what's your fucking beef? <laughs> True enough, Jack. Nothing too exciting, I'm sorry to say. I'm a government factory inspector. They posted me in this rotten hole to check over the old Marsh refinery. Speaking of which, I've got an appointment with the manager, Jacob Marsh. Okay, maybe I'll catch you later. That's the first friendly face I've seen in this damn town. But I've been in this business long enough to know he's hiding something. Look how suddenly that little blockade's gone. The one there too. Do you know the Burnham lad? He worked in the First National. Can't rightly see as I know him. Fucking liars. Won't open. A storage depot. It's shut. Hello, Mackie. Jack. Swell to see you again. Any leads on the Burnham case? Nope. Did you know the lad at all? Just pleasantries. Seemed a nice enough fella, if a little rough around the edges. Strange business, though. I'd never have fingered him as a crook. The First National was a well-run store. A rare thing here in Innsmouth. Okay, Mackie. Thanks. Goodbye, Jack. Be careful what you're doing. Very careful. Insmith's a dangerous place. Not everyone who visits here ends up leaving by the old bus route. This Mackie character knows plenty, but I don't think grilling him for scraps of information is gonna crack this case. It won't open. It won't budge. Another hanging 
God, some poor souls hung herself. No, clothes are hung, people are hanged. Why the hell hasn't she been taken down? So people like you can question it, obviously. It won't budge. A device that pumps highly compressed air. This town's deserted. Where is everybody? Just leave me be, stranger. Hey, hey, talk to me. I'm hey. looking for Brian Burke. Stop pestering me, stranger. It won't open. What the fuck? Does everybody just walk around this town? This statue commemorates the men who fought in the Revolutionary War. It's a variety store, and it's closed. It's not important. A dusty assortment of old, a small wooden clock. They haven't been read in a long time. Nothing of interest here. A crappy place. Evening. Hi. My name's Jack Walters. I'm just visiting. You don't say, sir. Gilman. Charlie Gilman. I run this here hotel of an evening. You got any rooms? I'd not rightly know that for sure. All habits cleaning rooms at present. Them's from out of town can leave a horrid mess. <laughs> Looks like a fucking It won't drama. budge. It's locked. It won't budge. It won't open. Something around here has to fucking open. Stop your snooping. And there's for hotel staff only. It won't open. It won't budge. It won't open. It won't open. It won't budge. Where is everybody? It's very quiet. I can't be seen talking to you. Do you know the Burnham lad? He worked... I never heard of no Burnham. These are the offices of a local newspaper, the Innsmouth Courier. That way is blocked by a police line. It's locked. It's locked. It must lead to the back of a variety store. It won't open. It won't budge. It won't open. Where in the hell am I supposed to go? I'm looking for Brian Burke. Can't rightly says I know him. It won't open. Yeah, this seems to be a story with every fucking door in this place. It 
won't budge. It's just an advertisement for the local Methodist church. From what I've seen of Innsmouth, I bet they don't get many takers. It won't budge. This motherfucker pissing. In the tempest strife, in the home of the mountain wave. When the driving rain of the hurricane is lights of the lighthouse out, and the growling thunder sounds is gong. Huh? Who's that there? Who oh, can you spare a few pennies, young mister? I can give you something for your generosity. Who are you? Zadok! That be my name, though too few years it now. Zedo Kellen! Do you know a Brian Burnham? Just a youngin. Worked over the store. He's gone. Killed, I reckon. Killed? What makes you think that? Them's from out of town running a store. Taking business from the Order of Dagon. They not accept that. What else can you tell me about this port? He just bring old Zadok a bottle of something nice, and old Zadok will fill your head. Oh, I know where I'm using that bourbon. <laughs> fill my ears, motherfucker. Fill up good. Why, you're uncommonly kind, young fella. There'll be a little something in gratitude that might help you in your search. Yeah. Now you be calling me crazy, like them that start rumoring an anchor on the lip switch. But old Zadok's seen all manner of wicked things since before you was born. Old Captain Mobit where it all began. Telling desperate folks they'd order get better gods. Them's that would answer their prayers. Didn't the Christian folk of Innsmouth object to such blasphemy? <laughs> Aye, they did. It were around 46 that many folks in town were done with Obed and his ways. And all that wild preaching and too many missing, you see. Um, a party of good folk followed Captain Obed's crowd out to the reef. Shots were fired. Next day, Obed and thirty of his fathers were in jail. And for weeks all were quiet. Till that artful night of forty-six. Then I was outside reckoning out it being a riot. But I'd seen them. Swarms of them. Look, old man. I don't have time to listen to these fishing tales. Oh, psst. It was a massacre. The jail thrown open. Mounds of the dead and the dying. <gasps> Shooting and screaming and shouting all across the town square. Come morning, the mess was cleaned up. Old Obed and his family takes charge, they did. Folks were told to keep shy as strangers if we were known what was good for us. Sadok, who did all this? Who did all this? Said the old captain was now deeper in debt to his even gods. They were hankering for more than just sacrificing. Obed told folks they had to take the oaths of Dagon. What the hell are these oaths? When the hell is this gonna be over? You just asked old Wes about oaths of Dagon. I he take the third oath. Just head over to his hole in the dark street. Then you'll see. For definite. He's given me a key to the town poorhouse. It could come in handy. Where did Captain Obed Marsh learn of these heathen matters? In war and foreign parts, 
The old fool I lent to ways of making gains, doing even things. He found a tribe of Kanuckies in the South Seas led by a savage. Chief went by the name of Walakea. And his tribe never went without food, for they had all the fish they could catch. Old Obed learned from his Walakea that these things on this earth as most folks never heard about. Seems these Kanuckies was worshipped in undersea gods, with heaps of human sacrifices and other even things. But they was getting all kinds of favors in return. Plenty of fishing and even gold now and then. Human sacrifices? Maybe you've had just a bit too much. Motherfucker, you <clears throat> just saw dead bodies and two bitches hanging and you're gonna question fella, him? But just answer me this. Why is the Captain Obed roll out to the reef of Satan and chant a lot of rites and incantations in the dead of night so loud you can hear them all over the port? He cast something in the water that eve, out the other side of Devil's Reef. Some kind of thingamajig crafted out of lead. It was given to him by Wallachia. So, what happened? Well, not long after the smoke started coming after the chimneys at the old gold refinery, the Marsh family and those that had joined with Obed in his ways has started a prospering in the esoteric, esoteric order of Dagon. Came into being with his Ethan Sermon. Sermon. Uh, sh that shit they do. <laughs> what kinds of ceremonies? Mm. Yeah. Get out of here, lad. Don't wait for nothing. They'll know now. Um. I think he's had his fill for the night. Clearly. It won't budge. Mr. Walters, I must speak with you. It's Jack. And is there anyone in Innsmouth who doesn't know my name? My name's Rebecca Lawrence, and unless you want to join Innsmouth's long list of missing, I'd urge you to follow me. Good missing, enough for me. Huh? Like Burnham? Of that, I'm not sure. You'd be better off asking the Billiams' daughter, Ruth. She was dating Brian. What? Who's Ruth? Quickly, you have to follow me. It's not wise to be seen talking to outsiders. What else? Let's do this. Jack, Innsmouth is a strange place. There are things that have no business being here. Foul, reeking things. Strange. Trust me, I'm good with strange. That remains to be seen, but I can help you. My father discovered this strange sign while studying an old manuscript. It seems to ward off the more unusual elements in Innsmouth. It's a star. Whenever you find one, you can use it to find a moment of sanctuary. Now, I must leave before we're seen together. I've seen that eye-like symbol somewhere before, but never surrounded by a star. In yesterday's edition, we reported on a burglary at the recently opened First National Grocery Store in Innsmouth. The case took a new turn today as authorities in the town named Brian Burnham, the store's manager, as a suspect in the case. Burnham has not been seen since the robbery and is thought to have left the area. It is a stra very straightforward case, said Chief Constable Andrew Martin in response to inquiries by the advertiser. This young man simply robbed his employer and fled. I imagine he's out of the country now, if not the state. 
the chief constable dismissed concerns expressed by First National Groceries Regional Manager Mr. Arthur Anderson that Berman may have been kidnapped or injured. What fucking street did I need to find? I already forgot. What do you know about the break-in at the variety store? Only what was in the press. You should speak to Thomas Waite. He owns the joint. Where's his place? I think the Waite's house is over on Dock Street, near That's the back it. of the pool house. Thanks. Though I warn you, it's misdriven old Waite's a bit crazy. He doesn't talk a lot of sense. That's my sort of fella. He sounds just perfect. It's not my sort of fella. Won't budge. Jack, we can't be seen talking together. What is it? Why do you stay in Innsmouth, Rebecca? My grandfather, John Lawrence, was editor of the Innsmouth Courier. He was murdered in the slaughter of 46. He had always despised the marshes and their blasphemous doings, and it was he who led the party out to the reef that night. They arrested Captain Marsh and his order and tossed them in the old jailhouse. A few weeks later, my grandfather was dead. My father saw him die. Him and many others burned alive in the courier's basement. All the more grounds to leave. To leave would be to fail my own legacy. I have a duty to protect the good in Innsmouth. At least what little good remains. Okay, crazy. I'd fucking be out. She knows plenty, but I need to have a look around myself if I'm going to crack this case. Zadok? Zadok? Curse you, lad, for staring at me with them eyes. The old cat in the nail, and he's staying there. He can get me. Uh, he can't. No, no, he can't get me. Hey. I had nothing done. I ain't done nothing or told nobody nothing. It won't open. This town fucking sucks. I hate all you dildos. I wouldn't even call that a street. It won't open. It won't budge. It won't budge. Fog's thick tonight. Damn enough to put out a fellow's smokes. It's locked. It's locked. Wrong key. Uh, twelve oh seven. Ow. It won't open. It won't bud. It won't open. Mm. What the 
fuck is the poor house? Excuse me, Constable. Jack Walters. Ah, uh, ropes. Alien ropes. What do you want? Could you help out a stranger to this fine port? Are you being funny? No, not at all. I'm looking for a Brian Burnham. He works locally, in the First National Grocery Store. Innsmouth don't take too kindly to them from out of town. Get lost, stranger. That fellow was just stringing me along with a lot of nothing about nothing. It's unlocked. Yay, found it. If I see you without fire, I'll report your order. I'll not say nothing. I'm looking for Brian Burnham. Please stop bothering me, stranger. Whatever. It won't open. It won't budge. It won't open. Do you need any help? Disease is rampant in this town. You know the Burnham lad? He worked in the. It's the entrance to the town poorhouse. The sign says, Innsmouth Poorhouse, in memory of Lady Warren's. Nope, not important, I guess. It won't open. So Lady Warren's passed away. The food is rotten. What the fuck is that? But we'll die soon enough. What are you looking at there, old timer? Nothing. I'm just looking. What you doing in old Warren's house, young feller? This hole is for the broke and the dying. I'm trying to find Dock Street. It's out back of the house. Everything in Innsmouth is rotten and dying. Windows boarded up. And all sorts of curious barking and crawling around black cellars and attics. How would you like to be living in a town like this, fella? I've been to more welcoming places. I don't think he's been outdoors for years. He isn't gonna know anything. This almshouse is home to the old and the destitute. These beds reek of sweat and urine. Whatever. The old woman's dead. Whatever. It won't budge. It won't budge. Seems nothing ever nothing does. of interest.
Who the fuck are you? This town's deserted. Where is everybody? If you don't like it, Jesus just Christ. turn around and leave. Evil fucking bitch. It won't open. It's like if Marge Simpson was on crack. That's what you fucking sound like. Hello there, little lady. Hi, sir. Are your parents at home? Daddy's at work and mommy's upstairs. It's fucking Wednesday. She's been bad. I see. So, what's your name, little lady? Ramona. Well, Ramona, could you get your mommy for me? Nope. Mommy bites. Daddy says we've got to keep her up there for her own good. Excuse me? When I go near the door, she growls. I don't love mommy like I love my daddy. You don't say. Ramona, I really need to speak to your daddy. Do you know when he'll be home? Soon, I think. You can wait inside if you like. Daddy won't mind. I'm drawing pictures with my crayons. That would be great. Thanks. I should check the place over while I've got the chance. Nothing of interest. It won't budge. An old a house plant. It won't open. It won't open. It's a recent family photo. The corner's been torn off. I can only see Thomas and Ramona Waits in the picture. It won't budge. It won't budge. The door's bolted shut. An old chest of drawers. Nothing of interest. Well, oh, before I start making trouble, let's what see are you if drawing, she has anything Ramona? else to say. Pictures of mommy and daddy. What are you drawing, Ramona? Of Pictures nothing. of mommy and daddy. Nothing of interest. The door is bolted shut. That's what we do. We stick our face there. Sounds like somebody just died. An old wardrobe. Can't see anything of use. Looks like a diary. Nope. There's blooded scrape marks on the walls. There's blooded scrape marks on the walls. Yeah, no shit.
fuck is going on here? Oh, God. No. They've taken the last thing I loved away from me. I'm sorry. I didn't realize what was up there. What the hell was that thing? There's no time to explain. They'll be here soon. Listen to me closely. You've been the talk of the town all day, asking after the Burnham lad. I heard he never made it to Boston, that he was caught by the Order of Dagon. Did he pocket anything from the store's safe? Thankfully, no. It's sturdy. He'd never have wrenched it open with a crowbar. There's something in there that needs protecting from the Order. You've got to get it out of Innsmouth. Take the key to the back of my store. The safe combinations in my diary, upstairs. Hurry, Jack! What the hell's in the safe, anyway? You've gone too far this time, wait. We're taking you in for murder. You'll swing for this. Wait, he didn't do anything wrong. He killed his own daughter. His own flesh and blood. There's plenty wrong with that. I'm reckoning you do well to mind your own business, stranger. It ends must we handle things by the old ways. A bunch of weirdos. It won't open. No, it won't open. It won't open. An old chest of drawers. Nothing of interest. It won't budge. Now he said her fucking birthday is the combination. I don't know her birthday. Nope, nothing of interest. An old mattress. It's not important. I don't think it said it her birthday. An old chest of drawers, nothing of interest. Did you hear about Thomas Waits? I heard when they caught him. He was kicked in the blood. Oh, Jesus, she sounds like she's gonna eat my soul. Jack, Jack. Oh, thank God I found you. Waits been arrested for the murder of his daughter. I know. It's my fault, Rebecca. What are you talking about, Jack? What's your fault? There was something in the attic. Some kind of animal, and... I let it loose. It's all my fault. The police dragged Waits off. He can't take the fall for this. He's done nothing wrong. We gotta do something. Guilty or not, the Order will see him lynched for it. There's nothing you can do. You must have taken quite a bang in there, Jack. Your head's bleeding. Yeah. I think I was out of it for a little while. I see you've got some bandages. Use them on your head. It'll help you heal. You're not losing too much blood. You won't need a suture. Thanks, Rebecca.
help you? You're <laughs> making some weird ass noises. Weird like your face. Yeah, you're a lady. I don't think you try. That's not the baby, that's the mustard. <laughs>